Hello, I'm Jorge Getoso. Welcome to a new program from Washington. On today's show, the hazards of the genetically modified products worldwide. Our guest, Alexis Biden May, political director of the Organic Consumer Association. Ms. Biden May, a warm welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Jorge. Define for our audience what is a genetically modified food. Yes, these are foods primarily plants. We don't have any genetically modified animals on the market globally yet that I'm aware of, but plants that have been changed and given the DNA of another organism. Usually it's a bacteria. You may remember from uh, biology classes that we have five different forms of life on the planet, plants, animals, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. So there couldn't be anything more different than a bacteria and a plant, but they're mixed together in a lab to produce new plants that have unique characteristics, primarily characteristics that enable industrial agriculture. For instance, the characteristics of being able to absorb an herbicide or produce an insecticide inside the plant. The acronym is GMOs. That's right. So what percentage of GMOs are in the food of the U.S.? Well, we have a certain number of plants that are grown on a mass scale. So all of our, you know, of our top 10 crops, most of them are genetically modified. And would you say that 60% of the food consumed in the U.S. is GMO? Well, one estimate is that 80% wow. of our foods contain genetically modified ingredients because just about all sweeteners and oils are coming from genetically modified plants. Is that affecting the health? I'm afraid so, yes. Uh, most of the members of the Organic Consumers Association, they get involved in this cause because their health has been impacted. The story that I hear most often is, I was sick, I sought medical treatment. I was still sick. I got GMOs out of my diet and my health improved. Any data that you can refer to or has been already developed regarding the consumption of GMOs? Um, yes, we, we consume GMOs in just about all processed foods. So um, probably today you had a genetically modified organism. For instance, if you drank a soda, that was probably sweetened with genetically modified sugar from sugar beets or genetically modified corn, high fructose corn syrup. And in terms of the impact in, in health, is there already some data that you can refer to that you say, well, this is the impact? Unfortunately, no. Um, most genetically modified crops have not been safety tested by any government agency in the world even. Um, the countries that have chosen not to grow genetically modified crops have primarily done so for environmental reasons or to protect their markets and their farmers. So uh, there aren't any strong reviews of genetically modified organisms on their health impacts. The first study of that kind was done in France just a couple years ago by a scientist named Seralini. He did the first long-term feeding trial of rats and the rats who were fed genetically modified foods their entire lives had shorter lifespans and they had massive tumors, especially mammary tumors in the female rats. Now, we're waiting for that study to be replicated so that we understand the full impact of that for human health, um, but there's been very little research like that. Where is the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA here in the U.S., regarding all this? The Food and Drug Administration has given a blanket exemption to GMOs from our laws that would um, that would require all food additives to be tested for safety before we start eating them. In 1992, the Food and Drug Administration told companies like Monsanto, don't worry about it. If you think your foods are safe, we're, we're fine. We won't ask you any more questions and we won't require you to, to safety test them. And the, and the GMOs are labeled? in the U.S.? No, not in the United States. We don't have labels on genetically modified foods here, although 64 other countries label genetically modified and why foods. Not? Um, I think because of the influence of corporations like Monsanto over our political process. That is a subject that you know very well because you were demonstrating in front of the White House uh, trying to get the Obama administration to rule on that and you have even been arrested. 
That's right. Um, although we consider ourselves one of the greatest democracies in the world, if not the greatest democracy, there's no real access to the agencies for, for normal people. You can't deliver a petition to the White House. They, there's no one to accept that petition. Um, so, so yes, we, we have not succeeded in reaching President Obama on this issue. What would you say, because basically your organization defends and promotes organic food, what are the benefits of organic food versus GMOs? Well, one benefit is that they have not been modified to work with agricultural chemicals. So you're not eating uh, an herbicide that's soaked into the plant. You're not eating an insecticide produced by the cells of the plant. I think that's the, the best um, difference between GMOs and normal organic food. But organic food also improves the quality of the soil, which increases the nutrition in the food. So you're telling me that uh, we're talking pesticides and herbicides incorporated in the GMOs? How, how they do it? 99.7% of the GMOs grown in the world today are pesticide plants. They take a soil bacteria, they take the genes of that bacteria, they insert it into the DNA, they give the plant the ability to withstand an application of herbicide that would normally kill it. Or they take a, a soil bacteria that's deadly to insects, they take those genes and insert them into the plant so that the plant itself becomes a pesticide. Well, uh, precisely about that, uh, you have said, and I, and I quote your words, that the business model of these large corporations that produce it, uh, in the, 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 the food, the modification food, uh, the, the business models of these large corporations is not about feeding the world, and then you say, is to sell insecticides, herbicides, and agricultural chemicals. Yes, and that remains the case today. First, Monsanto created Roundup Ready crops designed to work with the herbicide glyphosate. Now Dow Chemical has created 2,4-D tolerant crops. 2,4-D was half of the formula of Agent Orange that the United States government used during the Vietnam War to, 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 wipe defoliate, out. Yeah, to wipe out all the crops, to, to starve the people essentially. Um, but that, that herbicide is used in agriculture in the United States to a certain extent, but we're going to see that the use of that herbicide increase by as much as 50 times when there are genetically modified crops that can withstand it. We also see new dicamba tolerant crops coming out to the market. And Monsanto recently tried to buy the company Syngenta, one of its competitors, for the seed market, but it was willing to sell off Syngenta's seed market in order to get Syngenta's pesticides. So really, Monsanto always markets itself as sustainable agriculture, feeding the world, but it is a chemical company, and they are going all in on that. On pesticides, on chemicals. And precisely talking about the corporations that control the GMO market in the US, um, they are often criticized like the evil of the world as, uh, in, for many people. And, and, and your words about that is say, our food supply in the United States, our food supply in the United States is completely controlled by large corporations that have undue influence over our government. I'm afraid that's true. Almost all of the food that you can buy in the grocery store, including most of the organic brands, are controlled by large multinational companies. Pepsi is actually the largest food company in the United States even though you associate that with maybe chips and soda, they sell most of the food that we eat, including some natural and organic. So they're, they're already jumping into the organic market? They're trying to modify it? No, not really. <laughs> no, they, they, um, it's a way for them to make more money because they can create a niche market of more expensive foods that they can market as an alternative to their junk foods. So if you feel that you're getting sick because you eat too much of Pepsi's junk foods, well then they can offer you an alternative, but they'll make you pay dearly for it. Why organic food is more expensive than GMOs? Um, because it has more value to the consumer. People are willing to pay more for it because they know they need healthy organic food. But supposedly it takes less 
uh, investment to produce a naturally tomato oh, yeah. than a, a genetically modified uh, organism. That's right, yeah. The inputs are virtually costless to the farmer. If you're using manure and compost as your fertilizer, you're not buying genetically modified seeds, which in some countries, in India, for instance, genetically modified seeds cost 800 times the seed that you can, you know, save yourself or buy from your neighbor or buy at the local market. So yeah, the costs that go into organic are virtually nothing. But in the United States, it's not what it actually costs. It's what the federal government is willing to subsidize. The federal government subsidizes all of our commodity crops, corn, soy, uh, cotton, canola, What's sugar beets. What's the reason why? Uh, to well, be uh, <laughs> competitive to... Uh, I, I think to, to benefit the companies involved in industrial agriculture, to benefit companies like Cargill, ADM, it, it makes the production of commodities much cheaper for these big corporations. Your words in the United States, the so-called quote-unquote democratic system is highly corrupted by corporate money and also you say we just have a terribly corrupted political system and corporations have really run over the agencies in the government that are supposed to regulate them is precisely what you're talking about so true subsidies yes for example for example and we just had a vote in the united states congress on whether or not people should have the right to know what they're eating just like 64 under other countries provide and the, the U.S. House of Representatives voted for a bill that would take away states' rights to provide that information to consumers on a local level at the states. Um, and we learned because of an organization called OpenSecrets.org, which tracks political money, we learned that the members of Congress who voted for taking away our right to know got three times the amount of money from agribusiness that the, the members of Congress who voted against it. What is your reaction about the ones who say that GMOs are the future, that is going to help uh, when we're going to face global warming, the increase of the population of this planet? Is this the future? I'm afraid not. That's, that's the thing that sells best because they don't have to then produce their nutritious food, their food that can withstand droughts. Um, they can always say, this is what we're going to do. Right now, we're making pesticide-related plants, but in the future, we're going to do all these things. So that's what they say, but, but I'm afraid not. It, it would be great if that were the case, except for the fact that this technology is so expensive. It costs like $100 million a day is spent by these big six chemical companies coming up with these GMO seeds when they're in development. It's tremendously expensive. Then you, you have one crop with one trait. We, we did see a drought tolerant crop recently approved by the United States Department of Agriculture. The Department of Agriculture said this might be helpful to about 15 percent of the corn farmers in the United States, but Monsanto can't recoup its investment that way. They, they have to sell it to everybody, and it's not useful to everybody. So, so this one-size-fits-all global solution will never work for the microclimates, for, for the different countries, different farming techniques, but Monsanto has to sell these things globally in order to make a profit. You're mentioning six corporations. Which are the six corporations? Let's see if I can name them. Dow, Syngenta, Monsanto, DuPont, Bayer, and BASF. So some of them are Europeans and the other ones are Americans. Yeah. And you were mentioning seeds. Yeah. So they produce genetically modified seeds. Mm -hmm. And they believe that they have a patent on that, like a software. Mm -hmm. So now what happens if someone buy their seed, sell their crops, and they have to buy again? Mm -hmm. They ask for what? Well, it, it just it's very expensive for the farmers to buy the seeds every year and then they have a license to grow them one time. And they can't save the seed for the next year. They can't buy the seed at the grain elevator, where U.S. farmers have traditionally just gone to the grain elevator to buy the seeds because corn is a seed, soy is a seed, the grains themselves. But those traditional methods are not allowed because you get a license to grow the seed one time, and that's what you're paying for. So th they have created a monopoly. That's right.
Also, another thing that you were mentioning is that the big challenge for small producers, you're saying that in the world it's about two billion mm -hmm. small producers, the big challenge are access to quality land and clean water. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned, and those big corporations are dis displacing them from the good lands in order for him to get the monoculture and so on and so forth. So there is a big problem around. That's right. About 70% of the food produced on the planet right now is not produced by corporate industrial farms. It's produced by family farms. And the majority of the family farms are tiny, like two acres. And if you have two acres, you can produce enough vegetables and fruits to feed your family and probably enough to share it with your community. But if you put two acres of farmland to, for instance, in India, cotton, and then you depend on the price of that cotton providing income for your family, that's, that's not going to work, especially when you have to buy genetically engineered seeds and all of the pesticides and fertilizers required to grow them. And then irrigation, a lot of farmers operating a small level don't have access to irrigation. We're seeing precisely a similar situation in Central America, mm -hmm. where um, those big corporations are getting into large pieces of land yeah. to produce palm oil. Mm -hmm. They're creating an uh, ecological impact in, in, the, in the land. Mm -hmm. They're also exploiting the uh, agricultural workers and displacing a lot of them because suddenly they are jobless because, because it's an extensive production. Uh, is that fair? No, it's not fair. It does no one any good. Is um, that capitalism? Uh, I guess it is the, the effect of capitalism. It is the rush to, to concentrate wealth in the hands of a few. How uh, worrisome and how dangerous that, that pattern could be? Well, we could have global famine, for one thing. Well, already, Supposedly, we're, well, it is true, we are producing more and more food every year. And most of, some of it in the world is genetically modified. And the, those, those yields, or at least the amount of food that's grown, continues to grow. But, but what are we producing? Ethanol, sweeteners, fats uh, that go into processed food products. So we're, we're left with a, a population on the planet, a billion people, they're fat because they eat a lot of calories but get very little nutrition. A billion people are starving because they can't compete on the global market with the, the Exxons of the world who are putting in the United States. We require 10% of the gasoline to be from corn. So then we have this competition between the, the poor people of the world seeking basic foodstuffs and the gasoline companies using ethanol in their and how difficult is to challenge those corporations? Well, it becomes increasingly more difficult. But we still are at a point where there are more of us than there are of them. We, we still do have two billion family farmers um, producing the majority of the world's food. And at least in the United States and probably most places in the world, we still have a choice. I can choose whether I want to buy my food from General Mills, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Kraft, Kellogg, or whether I want to choose to buy my food from a local farmer. And I choose when I can to buy from a local farmer. We, we still have that choice on the planet. And while it exists, we have to make use of it. On the other hand, you're mentioning that uh, they're really buying into, into the government institutions or into the government agencies. So basically, you cannot file your complaint <laughs> to those agencies because you're not going to be any luck. I'm afraid that's true. Yeah, we, we don't have the voice of the people reaching the decision makers in the United States. So the voice of the people is supposed to be the democracy. <laughs> democracy. And another thing that you were mentioning has to do with um, what is the trends of the future. And then you were saying that uh, uh, basically uh, the, the, in the future we could really uh, face the increase of the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to. We absolutely have to change the way we're farming. Because for one thing, we're in the United States, everyone's getting sick. They're fat, even as grade schoolers. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise. All sorts of cancers. We, we're getting sick. 
because we're eating a lot of calories and very little nutrition. At the same time, our agricultural lands are depleted. Using nitrogen fertilizers is a great way to destroy the soil. You can continue to produce a crop, but the soil is degraded. The soil runs off. We, we have the soil of the Midwest running off into the Mississippi River and out into the Gulf of Mexico, gone forever. And at that rate, soon we won't have soil on which to grow our crops. So if we don't change, eventually we it's not sustainable, is the very definition of it. And where is the mass media in all this? Is helping to create awareness of the danger of the hazards of what we're going through, or not really? We're breaking through just a little bit. Um, we have, on one hand, we have President Obama running these agencies that are telling us, go ahead, we're going to use cancer-causing pesticides, we don't care what the World Health Organization says, we're not going to safety test GMOs or label them. So we have a government that's completely stacked against us. At the same time, the First Lady, she grows an organic garden. And she has school children come in and she's teaching them about growing healthy food. Uh, so I think we have this dichotomy right now where there's a huge interest amongst the American public for information about healthy food, sustainable agriculture, and a government that's working with the corporations to suppress it. But I, th I think that the information is reaching the public to a certain extent. Because one of the um, suspicion is that 90% uh, of the mass media are owned by six corporations. So the suspicion is that in terms of the uh, information agenda, it's about 90% of Americans are getting, so we're talking close to 300 million people who are getting the information, the news, through the will of six large organizations run by corporations. And then if we put two and two together, the corporations are running the food supply. So they're not going to report about the dangers of that could have in your health, or, real, or yes. No, I think that most people find out this information through alternative news sources, often supported by foreign governments. Um, but we're also learning this from the internet. Um, for instance, my organization, Organic Consumers Association, we have a million likes on Facebook. Our campaign, Millions Against Monsanto, is similar. So the information is being transferred from person to person, and, and often people seek out trustworthy organizations as opposed to news sources when they really want to find out the truth. So in terms of your personal experience, uh, how did you get into this very specific uh, arena? Well, I made a wonderful connection to my boss, Ronnie Cummins, through David Bronner of Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps. He works on many good causes. I was working with him on the issue of industrial hemp. And he introduced me to Ronnie, and Ronnie needed someone to work in Washington, D.C., so I've been working with Ronnie since 2005. Who is financing your organization? We are primarily financed by small donations. We get very little corporate funding. There are a few corporations um, that we're completely in line with. Dr. Bronner's Magic Soaps, which is a family-run business, is one of those. Mercola.com, the number one health website, a great uh, source of information. They're also a supporter. So we have a very few, <laughs> uh, just two that I can name, uh, corporations that we're happy to work with because we agree on all things. So because also you're concerned about what is just or unjust and you believe, and I'm asking you, you believe that it's not just that people in the U.S. are eating badly and can put in their health in, at risk? That's right. I feel very grateful to do the work that I do because I've gotten this, this information. That's why it's so important to label GMO foods. People don't know. One, one study I read recently said only 11% of the public knows that they're eating genetically modified foods today. They think it's going to happen in the future, but it's happening now. With that information, you can make better choices, eat non-GMO and organic food, and experience better health. And so that's why we need to get this information out to people. So finally, Alexis, um, how optimistic are you that you can create awareness or you can uh, change the tide in terms of creating an impact on, uh, on uh, in the behavior of the people. 
I'm very optimistic. Um, just in my own lifetime, I'm 41 years old. Um, when I was a teenager, I became a vegetarian because I heard that the rainforests were being cut down for cattle grazing. So I had a consciousness. I, I changed the way I ate, but then I ate Doritos and drank Mountain Dew, and I didn't understand that aspect of the connection to my own health. The kids that I meet today that are interested in this cause, they've worked on organic farms, they take pride in eating healthfully, they don't want to support corporations like Pepsi, so I, I think that there's already been a change in my own lifetime. Alexis Bade and May, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Jorge.